गुड मॉर्निंग गुड आफ्टरनून गुड इवनिंग आई नो यू जॉइन फ्रॉम अराउंड द वर्ल्ड सो वेलकम टू फोर्थ सेशन ऑफ द ऑनलाइन कोर्स ऑन पीएलएस एसएम यूजिंग पार पीएलएस 7 I'm Dr. Mustafa Rasuli Manish from School of Hospitality and Tourism and Event Taylor's University and uh, this course offer uh, this online course offered by uh, our school School of Hospitality Tourism and Event Taylor's University uh, and we are in uh, session 4 of this course and today uh, we will discuss uh, moderator analysis and the mga analysis multi group analysis in uh, bar pls using pls scm and bar pls software okay let me go to okay uh, actually moderator is uh, one of the variable and one of the concept that many of the studies in the social science discipline different social science discipline apply and use this variable in a framework uh, and uh, actually the application of moderator and including moderator variable can influence on relationship between uh, uh, independent variable and dependent variable in our framework uh, actually the uh, application of moderator can strengthen or can change the nature of relationship between two variables so uh, moderation refer to uh, relationship between variables so when we include a moderator it means uh, and we believe and we hypothesize that uh, this effect effect of x to y uh, effect of uh, satisfaction to loyalty effect of uh, perception on support will change based on level of moderator so this is the meaning of moderator if uh, i want to clarify this one uh, if we have effect of uh, satisfaction on loyalty and we include the gender as a moderator it means we believe and we hypothesize this effect effect of satisfaction on loyalty has significant difference for male and female so when we hypothesize this uh, this moderation uh, variable or moderation effect or moderation hypothesis the right moderation hypothesis we need support from theory and literature as usual for developing this hypothesis so uh, go back to our example effect of the satisfaction on loyalty and the moderating effect of gender so if we say effect of satisfaction on loyalty is uh, different for male and female or stronger for female for example compared to male it means uh, we have support from specific theory established theory and also from literature previous uh, studies empirical studies to support this hypothesis and to support this statement uh, that the effect of satisfaction on loyalty is stronger for male or stronger for female or a significant difference between male and female for this effect so uh, uh, such as other uh, hypotheses for hypothesizing uh, moderator or moderation effect we have to uh, find uh, support and evidences from literature and also theory to support the uh, um, moderating uh, effect and uh, moderating variable right so uh, this is for hypothesis development 
Let me just show some uh, example of uh, hypothesis development for moderator. Um, Here, uh, this is a paper that we published uh, in 2017. Uh, actually, uh, in 2015, but this uh, issue then published uh, in 2017. Uh, in this paper, we uh, investigate effect of uh, perceived social cultural impact of tourism and community participation uh, on the case of Lankawi Island. Uh, but we have uh, some uh, moderator in this study, age and uh, gender and education level are moderators of this uh, study. So for example, here in hypothesis three, we uh, hypothesize significant difference exists between male and female resident with regard to relationship between perception of positive social cultural impact and community participation. So all variable is a positive, a independent variable is positive and negative social, cult social cultural impact on community participation. And when gender is moderator, it means there is significant difference between male and female for these effect. So actually, when we talk about moderator, we consider uh, two effects. Effect for uh, level one of moderator, one group of moderator, and effect for level two. Doesn't matter what method we apply to test or to assess moderator. We have a different method including the interaction effect and multi-group analysis for assessment of moderator. But hypothesis development is same. Hypothesis development for moderator refer to difference between this effect, effect of X to Y, effect of perception on community participation between two levels, two groups of moderator. If we have gender here between male and female. If we have the continuous variable between low level and high level of continuous variable. So hypothesizing moderator is different and prior to assessment of moderator. Assessment of moderator is another story. But before assessment, before we choose what, what method we want to use to assess a moderator, we need to hypothesize moderator and we need to support from literature and from theory for hypothesis development. Okay, so difference between an effect in uh, our framework between two groups of uh, uh, moder uh, two groups in um, uh, moderator variable or two levels of moderator variable is uh, basis for hypothesis development of moderator. This is uh, one example that uh, here, here we uh, actually apply uh, in this paper, we use the VAR PLS and uh, later I will show you in VAR PLS, we can create the moderation effect. So this is interaction effect for moderator analysis and assessment. So you can see we hypothesize difference between two groups of gender or male and female for this effect and this effect. Positive and negative impact on participation. Okay, here I later I will show you this is a graph that we can get from VAR PLS. Uh, but uh, another paper here you can see we have another paper here we published this paper in 2019 in Journal of Sustainable Tourism. And uh, in this paper, actually, we apply multi-group analysis 
multi-group analysis. This is framework of this uh, study. And uh, again, here we assess effect of some factor on perception. And leading location is uh, moderating variable. So we hypothesize effect of community attachment on perception, uh, difference between effect of community attachment and perception for residents uh, who are living uh, in the vicinity of uh, close to heritage site and the uh, resident uh, who are living far from heritage site. So moderating variable is leading location. And only in this study, we have moderating hypothesis. We don't have direct hypothesis, okay? Here from H1, if you look at from H1, community attachment is stronger among resident living within the vicinity of heritage site, right? But first hypothesis doesn't refer to moderator. First hypothesis, only we assess level of community attachment, okay? So we said community attachment is stronger among residents living in the vicinity of heritage site. So for this one, we apply t-test. So it's not moderator. But second one, the effect of community attachment, the effect of community attachment on resident perception. So here we have effect, community attachment on resident perception is stronger for resident living within vicinity of heritage site. So here we hypothesize moderating role of leading location. And we have one tail hypothesis here because we said for one group, this effect is stronger. So we know, we know the sign, we know the direction of this moderator. Right? So we can, here we hypothesize one thing. But if we, if I go back to, uh, okay, I think I close the page. Okay, but the previous paper, actually only we hypothesize difference between impact and participation. And we didn't, uh, in hypothesis, we didn't hypothesize this effect is stronger for which one, for male or for female. Only we know difference between uh, these effects uh, for between male and female. So uh, that hypothesis was two-tail hypothesis moderator. But here, our uh, hypothesis for moderator is one tail. Okay, so if we look at hypothesis for this study, we have only uh, comparison between uh, level of this variable, so it's, uh, 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 we apply t-test uh, for uh, this hypothesis and only moderating hypothesis. H2 is moderating hypothesis, H3 is moderating hypothesis, H6 is moderating hypothesis. So if we go to this framework, we have only we only hypothesize difference between variable for two levels of moderator and the moderating variable. And we hypothesize a difference between effect for two levels of moderator based on leading location. So we, uh, and we don't have a direct hypothesis. So it's possible. Someone asked, okay, when we have community attachment to resident perception, uh, is it possible to uh, only focus on moderating hypothesis? Yes, we do, we did in this paper. And you can see here only we hypothesize the uh, difference between effect and uh, uh, the level of variable and also moderator for uh, effect in this paper. Okay, so uh, this is the way that we hypothesize moderator. So moderator 
regardless of the method that we apply, refer to difference between two levels of moderator for a specific effect, effect of X to Y. Okay? So um, we need to be very careful for hypothesis development for uh, moderator in first place. When we hypothesize moderator, we can apply different methods, uh, at least these two methods, most common methods, these two methods, interaction effect and multi-group analysis for assessment of moderator. For assessment of moderator. Uh, before going to assessment, just want to add one thing. Uh, you know, uh, we have many different framework, different uh, structure theory, uh, including some variable that influence on dependent variable. But uh, Always moderator can be a good contribution, theoretical contribution. Because most of time, uh, framework is uh, developed in general context. And uh, uh, actually previous study uh, didn't uh, investigate heterogeneity among respondents. And moderator, application of moderator can show heterogeneity among respondents. If I go back to this paper, okay, this paper is uh, for a very, very common and famous framework. So many studies apply this framework. Now, uh, our, we also use uh, uh, some variables similar to this variable in our course, your data set that you are working. Right, but how actually we managed to publish in this journal? This journal, one of top journal in tourism, because of this moderator. This relationship already investigated, and there are results for this relationship in many previous studies. But what about this one? This is new, and this is actually novelty and theoretical contribution of this paper. We know these factors affect on perception. And many studies investigated this positive effect and supported this effect. But what about difference between people that living in one location and uh, the people that uh, were living far from this heritage site? What's the difference between their perception and their opinion and this effect? So, always finding a good moderator can be a good contribution, theoretical contribution. For example, in another paper, we try to, uh, same model, but we compare between rural resident and urban resident. And uh, we actually found interesting result. So it means this framework is established framework, but it doesn't mean that work is similar in all contexts. When we have two different contexts with the different characteristics, for example, rural heritage site and urban heritage site, should be some differences between these two contexts. So location can be introduced as a moderator and can have significant theoretical contribution. Okay. Okay. Okay, so uh, we have two methods for assessment of moderator, uh, interaction effect and multiple analysis. Interaction effect, actually we uh, introduce, uh, this is the formula, mathematical formula for interaction effect. So when we uh, apply this method, it means we create the, the direct effect of moderator on uh, dependent variable or endogenous variable. And also we create interaction between moderator and exogenous variable, this term, right? This term, XM. X is uh, IV and M is moderator. So we assess actually this B3 and significance of this B is B3. So B3 is coefficient of interaction effect. If this coefficient is significant, means M is significant moderator 
for a factor of x to y. What does it mean? It means for two levels of m, for two levels of m, this effect is significantly different. For two levels of m, m a level one and m a level two. So respondent belong to m level one. This effect is significantly different with respondent belong to ML two, level two. So if this coefficient of interaction effect is significant, means significant difference between these two groups. Okay, so this is the way that we apply interaction effect for assessment of uh, moderator. We have a different method for uh, creating interaction effect. Uh, one method that uh, is, uh, uh, actually developed by Chin 1996 is the product uh, indicator approach. Uh, another one by uh, Chin uh, 2003 and Hensler and Fassett 2010 is two-stage approach. And another one is hybrid approach and orthogonalizing approach. So there are different approach to create interaction effect, to create interaction effect. But the assessment of interaction effect at the end, we assess interaction effect for when we apply this method. For a product indicator means, okay, if we have the X1 and X2 indicator of the first, uh, indicator of X and M1 and M2 indicators or items of M, MX or interaction effect include X1, M1, X1, M2, X2, M1, and X2, M2. So interaction effect will include four items. So this is the product indicator method to create interaction effect. So we assess this beta tree or assessment of moderator. This is two-stage approach. For two-stage approach, we calculate the score and we interact score of X and M. So we have here X, M, a score of these two. When one of our variables, a moderator, either moderator or IV, is formative and another one is reflective, we have to use two-stage. But for both reflective and formative, we can choose either product indicator or two states. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, based on uh, uh, actually the simulation study by Hensler and Sheen, two stage and hybrid approach can high level of statistical power compared to orthogonalizing approach. And uh, if we have a few indicator or few sample, few observation, orthogonalizing can be, uh, can have some advantages. But uh, uh, because we actually can perform the two stage approach and the uh, product, uh, product indicator approach in all available software, including uh, VAT PLS, so these two approach are preferred approach, but only if we have same, uh, I, uh, same uh, independent variable and uh, moderator nature, we have formative or reflective. But if one is formative and reflective, only we can choose to a state approach to create interaction. Um, okay, how we actually interpret uh, moderator? If you look at this formula, this formula come from this one, okay? So this formula can, uh, this equation can be changed to this one, right? Okay. So if we have this equation for relationship between X and Y and moderating effect of M, here 
we have if we change m one level if we change m one level for example we consider uh, level one we assign one to level one and the two to level two right okay so for level one the relationship between y and x will be okay y b0 plus b2 plus error okay and b1 plus b3 x right so because m is one if we change m to two so we go to second level so this one we will be y so this is for first level so for second level y b b zero two b two okay and error plus here b one plus two b three x right so if we uh, uh, draw the graph of the plot of these two relationship first one will be for low level of m for example for low level of m a slope is b1 plus b3 so let's say this is the slope so this is b1 plus b3 but what about second level? Second level means respondent with higher level of respondent belongs to higher level of moderator. So the graph will be B1 plus 2B3. So this will be higher. So the slope will be higher. Right? So this one is B1 plus B3. This one is B1 plus 2B3. Okay. So, if interaction effect, if interaction effect B3 is positive, if interaction effect coefficient is positive means this effect effect of x to y effect of x to y is because b b3 is positive and b1 is a, a relationship between x and y right it means b1 plus 2b3 is a stronger stronger for high level of moderator so when we uh, uh, draw plot of uh, relationship x to y for low level and high level of moderator if interaction coefficient is positive means this effect has higher slope is stronger for high level of moderator. So this is interpretation of plot. So if interaction effect is positive, means higher level of moderator effect of X to Y is stronger. But if this B3 is negative, this B3 is negative, so b1 plus b3 here but b1 plus 2b3 if b3 is negative this slope will be will be smaller and sometime the uh, sign of slope will change okay so this one if b3 is negative will be something similar to this because the slope should be lower than this one or sometime will change to this slope 
because this term will be negative term. So the slope will be B1 minus two absolute value of B3. So for uh, interpretation of interaction effect, if interaction effect is positive, means effect of x to y, positive effect of x to y, is stronger, is stronger, and slope is higher for higher level of moderate, and weaker for lower level of, for low level of moderate. But if uh, coefficient interaction effect uh, coefficient is negative means effect is weaker for higher level of moderator and stronger for low level of moderator so this is the interpretation of uh, a mod, uh, this interaction effect coefficient based on the sign of this interaction effect so this interaction effect should be significant first. So the size should be, when we assess the size of this should be significant. And based on sign, we can interpret result of moderating effect. And see this uh, effect of X to Y is uh, stronger or weaker for what level of moderate. Okay. So this is uh, for uh, uh, interpretation of interaction. Here, for example, here you can see two uh, slope. Uh, this is for uh, high level of gender, for example, and this is for low level of gender. So you can see here the slope of high level of gender. For example, gender, high level of gender is female. Uh, because uh, this is based on the number that we give to this variable. We give two to female and one to male, right? So high level is female. So when this slope, compared to this one, when this slope is higher, so this effect is stronger for high, le high, for high level of uh, uh, moderator that is uh, female and this weaker for me, right? So for this one, interaction effect coefficient should be positive because the effect is stronger for high level of moderate. So this is uh, uh, the way that we interpret this graph based on uh, interaction effect and sign of interaction effect coefficient. For interaction effect, also we can calculate effect size, but uh, effect size is not a very critical and important uh, parameter to interpret moderator. For interpreting, mod uh, interpreting moderator, uh, only we need to check significance, and uh, then we can check the size of the sign of. Uh, moderate the sign of interaction effect. Okay, we have a uh, complex uh, actually types of uh, moderator. If we uh, have two moderator together, x1 and x2, we have male, we have gender, and we have the uh, age. So if we uh, interact these two. For example, for age, we have three groups or two groups, young and old. And for gender, we have male and female. So when we interact these two moderators, we will create three-way interaction uh, moderator. And actually in three-way interaction moder moderator, we have four different groups. And we have slope for these four groups. So we can actually compare these four groups and see the effect difference between these four groups. 
if we have this type of situation, we need to create three-way interaction. This is a, a graph for three-way interaction from Dawson 2013. This paper is one of the very good paper on uh, uh, understanding moderate moderation and moderating effect. Uh, okay. And you can see the paper, right? And this is the paper of Dawson, Jeremy Dawson. So uh, this paper, uh, he explained the moderating the management and research, what, why, when, and how. And there are some good uh, uh, graph and the mathematical formula, if you are interested, about, know about mathematical formula behind uh, this interaction effect assessment. You can see here is three-way interaction. Here is uh, one interesting uh, type of uh, moderator is uh, curvy linear uh, effect or uh, nonlinear moderator. I will show you in back PLS we can get this nonlinear uh, moderator. So compared to non nonlinear effect. So here you can see this uh, the different types of moderator that uh, the author discussed uh, in this paper. Okay, and uh, here I got this from uh, Dawson, and here you can see nonlinear moderator. Uh, this is the result of uh, uh, the output of RPLS. You can get this plot from uh, result of RPLS. If your relationship is nonlinear, also you can compare these two nonlinear uh, effect. Actually, here you can see the effect is for high level. Uh, for low level and high level of moderator, even the curve is different. So uh, it's not only a slope of line. If the relationship is linear, okay, we compare slope of line. But if the relationship is nonlinear, you can also compare the curve. Okay, and uh, this is moderated mediation. This is a, a new topic and recently discussed in some paper. One of the uh, very good paper on this one, this uh, uh, paper by uh, Andrew Hayes, an index and test of linear moderated mediation. Moderated mediation actually means moderation of indirect effect. So when you have a, med when you have a mediator, when you have a mediator and indirect effect, if you want to assess moderation effect of gender on this indirect effect, this will be moderated mediation. So it's not very complex concept, it's a simple concept. Instead of uh, moderating effect on direct uh, moderation effect on direct effect, you can assess moderating role of a variable on indirect effect. So this will, uh, this will be moderated mediation. Okay, if you go to this paper, you can see different, actually the conceptual model and a statistical model for this moderated mediation. This moderated mediation is, uh, we can get result for this moderated mediation in VAR PLS. So this is very, one of the interesting uh, output and result of VAR PLS. So automatically we can get this moderated mediation result from VAR PLS. Okay, so all these things uh, uh, was for interaction effect. When we want to apply interaction effect for assessment of moderator. Another line, Another main method for assessment of moderator is multi-group analysis. In multi-group analysis, actually, we don't create inter interaction effect and we don't assess interaction effect. We split our data to two groups, right? We assess model for first group, we assess model for second group, and we compare path coefficient between first and second group and see, is there any difference between these two or not, right? 
So the concept is exactly same as interaction effect, but the method is different. Method is different. So when we decide to apply multi-group analysis for assessment of moderator, we have to split our data to two groups and we assess our model for uh, based on uh, data from each group and compare path coefficient and test significance of significance between path coefficient, significant difference between path coefficient from these two groups. So this is another way. Okay, when our variable, moderating variable is a continuous variable, the continuous variable, or a dichotomous variable, is preferred to apply interaction effect, especially for continuous variable. Or if only we want to assess effect of moderator in one path, one direct or indirect effect, or two direct effect, we don't want to assess effect of moderator for all direct or indirect effect in our framework. If only we want to assess in one path, one relationship, indirect or direct effect, is better to use interaction. But if we want to see effect of moderator for whole model, right, for whole model, like this paper, this paper, we assess effect of leading location for all relationship. So in this case, it's better to use multi-group analysis. But uh, multi-group analysis, if you have categorical variable for multi-group analysis, it's easy to use. You have a few groups, right? But if you have a continuous variable, you need to split your data. The common method is based on median. So 50% of respondents belong to group one and 50% belong to group two. So you divide in two groups and use this data, this splitted data for uh, comparison between group one and group two. Uh, for, um, Actually, here uh, we you can see the concept of multi-group analysis. In multi-group analysis, we have B1 for group one and B2 for group two. It's exactly the same as two graph, two plots. When we use interaction effect, we draw two plots, right? Plot for high level of moderator and low level of moderator. Actually, this is the same. But the plot, just we draw the plot. But here we need to test significance of difference between B1 and B2. So uh, this is the concept of multi-group analysis. For multi-group analysis, we have different uh, methods. We have uh, parametric tests, this is very common in the literature. Uh, we have a permutation uh, approach suggested by Chin 2003. And we have a non-parametric approach suggested by Hensler 2007 and nine, right? So uh, we have these three methods for assessment of multi-group, uh, for uh, performing multi-group analysis when, and uh, compare uh, the path coefficient to two groups. But the, the most important things, uh, this is the formula for each one. Um, if we choose the parametric, uh, actually, we have two main formula. Uh, here you can see uh, the uh, formula. Um, this is a standard error. And uh, here in uh, numerator, you can see difference between path coefficient. And in denominator, you can see a standard error. So we apply different formula to calculate a standard error. This is uh, 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 actually pull the standard error and this is Satterweight uh, method uh, to calculate standard error for uh, difference between path coefficient and also difference between, later I will explain, loading or weight for measurement invariance. 
Okay. So, but these uh, actually under uh, this formula are under parametric test. Uh, but before uh, multi-group analysis, before comparing path coefficient, if you want to apply multi-group analysis for moderating assessment, you have to check invariance. You have you need to do invariance assessment. You have to check uh, loading measurement model invariance. So your measurement model should be invariant, should not be different. So you have to establish measurement invariance before performing multi-group analysis. Why? Because without establishing the measurement invariance, maybe the difference between a path coefficient in uh, multi-group analysis that you get uh, belongs to difference between measurement model, not path coefficient. So you will have misinterpretation. So before performing MGA, before, per, uh, before comparing PAD coefficient, you have to establish measurement invariance. All right? So for measurement invariance, we compare loading or in uh, uh, PLS, actually recent literature uh, suggests to compare weight. And if at least 50% of loading or 50% of uh, weight are invariant, means are not significantly different, we can establish partial invariance and we can go for multi-group analysis. But uh, more than 50% is better. If we get 100% uh, invariance, so we have full measurement invariant for, uh, by comparing uh, loading and weight. But this is based on parametric approach for measurement invariance and also for multi-group analysis. As I said, recent literature also suggests using permutation test, permutation approach for this measurement invariance and multi-group analysis and some non-parametric methods. But this permutation and non-parametric is not uh, still, at the moment, is not available in VAR PLS. And VAR PLS uh, do measurement invariance and multi-group analysis based on parametric approach, based on this formula for both, for loading weight and also for path coefficient, okay? So this is a summary of uh, two main methods, hypothesizing moderator, and two main methods for assessment of uh, uh, moderator. Okay, let me go to software now. You can see uh, software, right? Okay, you can see? Yes. yes okay. Okay. So, uh, we uh, before worked with the software, and this is a framework that we developed before. Uh, uh, I want to show you how we create the uh, uh, in interaction effect and moderating effect in VAR PLS. And also, I will show you. Uh, multi-group analysis in VAR PLS and the uh, moderated mediation effect in VAR PLS, how we can get the result of moderating uh, uh, mediation effect. Okay, so this is the, the framework that we have uh, already created uh, to add the moderating variable, you know, for any changes in our framework, we need to go to a step four. So if we click on step four, we can go to uh, step four here. And uh, for interaction effect, for interaction effect, my uh, 
the moderator that I want to introduce to this framework is involvement. Okay, I want to see effect of moderating the role of moderating effect of involvement for the effect of perception on support. So we want to introduce moderator for this effect. We already hypothesized and we know uh, resident with higher level of uh, involvement, with higher level of involvement, the effect of perception in, on support is stronger compared to resident with lower level of involvement. Okay, so this is our hypothesis. And we want to test this hypothesis using interaction. Uh, first, let me uh, delete this effect. We don't want this effect. So uh, we have this effect and we want to introduce involvement as a moderator for this effect. First, we need to create the variable. So we don't have involvement here. So uh, to create variable, we need to click on create. And the involvement is our uh, variable, moderating variable. So okay. now we have involvement. Okay. To create moderating effect, we have an option here, moderating link option. If we click on moderating link option, create, delete, and delete all moderating effect. Click on create moderating effect. When we click on this one, this will be yellow. Then uh, we need to click on moderating variable and also click on effect that we want to introduce this moderator to that effect. So if I click on here, so moderating effect will be appear as a dashed line. So this is moderating effect, right? So now we introduce moderating effect involvement as a moderating variable for the effect of perception on some, right? Okay, so uh, we need to save and close model and uh, go to a step five and perform SEM on this. Okay, here you can see, you can see this interaction coefficient for this interaction effect. So the coefficient for this interaction effect is minus 0 0.17. And the p-value is lower than 0 0.01. So it means this interaction effect is significant, but negative. Negative means effect of perception on support is weaker for resident with higher level of involvement and stronger for resident with lower level of involvement. So this is the meaning of negative. Okay. So, but look at the, let's look at the plot. VAR PLS actually provide very fancy and interesting plots for moderating effect. Okay, if we go to, uh, uh, of course we can see uh, moderating effect is in this path coefficient and p-value, okay? This is the moderating effect. Uh, minus 0 0.167 of uh, 1. Uh, 0.17 and uh, the p-value is lower than 0 0.001, okay? So you can report this one. If we go to plot, plot, linear and nonlinear relationship, okay? Here you can see this interaction effect. Interaction effect. But you can see 
here uh, verb. It means our uh, default uh, algorithm for inner model is nonlinear algorithm. So here you can see the plot for nonlinear effect. Okay. If I click on this bar, wow. Here you can see a 3D plot for this moderating effect. In this 3D plot, you can see step by step changing of relationship between ID and DV. ID and DV based on the level of involvement. So you have very detailed result for changing involvement and for the not only two level of involvement, if you want to see. So you can rotate to up, rotate to left, rotate to right. So you can see this effect and changing up this effect between IV and DV for different level of different levels of involvement. You can change, uh, this is 3D graph for a uh, rocky 3D graph for moderator. Also, you can see smooth uh, 3D graph, so it's a bit smoother, but still you can see uh, effect of IV to DV by changing and for different level of involvement. If your study is something that you, uh, you don't want only see effect of high level or difference between high level and low level. You want to see effect uh, between different levels. When we, when involvement, when moderator change, you want to see what happened to IV and DV, relationship between IV and DV. So here you can see based on this 3D plot. Okay, if you don't want this 3D plot, you can use this focus graph. Okay, this is focus graph. Also, you can, uh, this is most common for uh, uh, moderator relationship and moderator assessment. Uh, here you can see based on data point for a standardized or unstandardized in one graph. And here you can see in two graph for unstandardized and standardized scale. So let's see uh, in uh, the last one, in two graph for standardized, okay? Here you can see graph for two levels of moderator for high involvement and low involvement. But actually this graph is nonlinear graph, but I don't want nonlinear. I only want linear uh, comparison between low level and high level of moderator. If I want just the linear, I can go to okay. Uh, I have to go to setting. I have to go to setting and change uh, change inner model algorithm to linear okay i also can change individual inner model sometime for relationship between variable we want nonlinear algorithm but only for moderator we want linear algorithm so we can come to this change individual inner model and change for each one. For example, I want to have the nonlinear for effect of community attachment to perception. Okay. So if you click on this one, you can change this one to part three. But for others, I want linear. So it's possible. Or I change all the direct relationship to VAR3. 
and also this one to verb three, but keep moderating effect linear. So it's possible. So it's possible to change a specific inner model algorithm for each relationship in verb PLS. So it doesn't need to uh, actually set for whole model. In the literature, maybe there are, uh, maybe we have some support for effect of one variable, nonlinear effect of one variable, but other variable only we have support for linear effect. So you can change. But here I change to nonlinear, but only for effect of uh, moderator and indirection uh, interaction effect, I change to linear. Okay, I can say. And we need to perform. Go to a step five and perform model. Okay, so here you can see slightly different. Beta is uh, lower, zero point one four, but still is significant. Okay, now if we go to plot, here you can see the plot for interaction effect is linear. So when you click on linear. Again, you can see this uh, rocky graph, rocky 3D graph, and you can see smooth graph, and uh, you can see a graph for high level and uh, low level in two uh, different uh, graphs, right? So if we click on this one here, you can see. Okay, here, this is the plot, this is the slope of, uh, this is the slope of effect for high level of involvement. And this is the slope of effect for low level of involvement. So you can see the slope is for low level of involvement is bigger, is higher compared to a slope for low level, for high level of involvement. So this is the meaning and interpretation of negative interaction effect. So for negative interaction effect, here we have significant moderator, but interaction effect is negative means this effect, effect of perception on support is weaker, right? Is weaker for higher level of involvement. And is a stronger, is a stronger for lower level of involvement. Okay, so if you hypothesize this moderator, if you hypothesize this moderator one tail, and in your hypothesis, you said the, and you hypothesize effect of the perception on support is stronger for high level, for residents with high level of involvement. Okay, here the result is significant, but actually cannot support your hypothesis because your hypothesis say uh, the effect is stronger for resident with high level of involvement, but the result show is weaker for resident with high level of involvement, right? So here you can get the plot. Okay, but another uh, very interesting feature in uh, that is uh, actually added in VARP uh, PLS7 and was not available in uh, other uh, uh, VARP PLS version. Here default is for continuous variable. Involvement is a continuous variable, including five or six items. Right. Uh, so in first level and default software for this graph, software split data to uh, two groups, 50% and 50%, right, uh, based on median. So 50% of respondents belong to group one and 50% respondent belong to group two, high level of involvement and 50% low level of involvement. In the new version of our PLS, we can change this split. For example, 
if we want to uh, compare only uh, resident, only resident, uh, thirty percent of lowest uh, resident, the lowest uh, level of involvement, with seventy percent. Okay, so if we want to compare thirty percent of uh, resident. With 70%. So split not based on median, split based on 30% of uh, uh, respondent and 70% of this respondent. Or we want to compare quarter, quartile uh, one, first quartile, 25 percentile, and 75 percent, and the other, the rest. And the rest. Okay. So uh, we can change this uh, split fraction here and change to 25% and 75%. So if we click on this one, you can see it will be slightly different. So here, you can see the slope is almost same. So if we change this level, instead of median to 75% and 25%, so you can see uh, this uh, two uh, slope almost the uh, same, and there is no significant difference between to this uh, seventy-five percent and uh, twenty-five percent and uh, seventy-five percent of respondent, and high level and low level of involvement based on this percentage. Okay, so this is a new feature. If in the, any of study that uh, you are doing, you want to split not based on median, based on uh, other criteria. So it's possible to do and to get this graph based on uh, bar PL, right? Okay, so this is the um, graph that you can get for interpretation of result of uh, bar PLS. So in traction effect, uh, first you need to check the size and significance of interaction effect, then sign. So based on sign, you can understand the, uh, which uh, effect is stronger and which one is the weaker for high level or low level of, low level of uh, moderator. And then uh, you can get the uh, uh, graphs or plots uh, from here and compare the plots for low and high level of moderator. Compare the effect for high and low level of moderator. Okay, this is for uh, interaction effect. Okay, let me the, just add the, uh, let me go to this paper before going to uh, multi-group analysis. Okay, this is uh, the paper by uh, Andrew Hayes about moderated mediation. As I explained, moderated mediation is assessment of moderator for indirect effect. Assessment of moderator for indirect effect. So you need to see we need to check uh, interaction effect for indirect effect. So this will be moderated mediation. This is possible in bar PLS, okay? But uh, uh, here in this paper, uh, Hayes actually the suggested different uh, methods, different methods to uh, calculate assessment of or to assess uh, a moderated uh, mediation effect. So this is a conceptual model and a statistical model A, B, and C. But uh, VAR PLS can follow this uh, uh, conceptual model and a statistical model. So provide result for this model to assess uh, uh, moderated mediation. Moderated mediation here means assess moderation effect of W for indirect effect of X to Y through M, okay? So only we can apply this uh, approach in uh, bar PLS. 
Okay, how? Okay, so uh, for example, for this involvement, uh, if we want to change uh, and assess moderated mediation, we have to go to step four. Okay, and uh, let's say uh, we want to see an indirect effect of community attachment to support true perception. And we want to see, we want to assess involvement, uh, moderation effect of involvement for this indirect effect. For this indirect effect. CA perception, resident perception, and support. So we want to see a moderating effect of involvement for this indirect effect. Okay. Okay, let me change. We need to delete moderating effect. Okay, and uh, create moderating effect for this relationship. Okay, this one. First path, first segment. Okay, so here we need to create moderating link. Okay, done. So we created the, this link to be more similar to this uh, effect. Okay. So this is one dash one is for this effect. So it doesn't matter here. We, we don't want. It. Okay. So we have this effect. Then we need to save and uh, close. Okay. And proceed to step one. First, if we want to see, if we want to assess effect of involvement on. Uh, a relationship between community attachment and perception. Okay, here the interaction effect is uh, significant, p value is 0 0.01, and negative again, a negative. So, um, involvement is a significant moderator for effect of community attachment on perception. Okay, but we don't want this one. We want this, um, we want moderating effect of involvement for this indirect effect, okay? To check this one, we have to go to indirect effect, view indirect effect and total effect. So if we click on indirect effect and total effect, here we can see this moderated mediation effect. This is moderated mediation. This is effect of, this is effect of interaction uh, product, interaction product on indirect effect of, indirect effect of community attachment to support, through perception. So here we can see this moderated mediation effect. Okay. And if we go down, scroll down, here we can see uh, p value. So p value is 0 0.069. It's higher than 0 0.05. So it's not significant based on 5% uh, confidence interval, but uh, if we uh, uh, choose 0 0.1, 0 0.1, so this can be significant. Can be significant. So here you can get result of uh, moderated mediation. Moderated mediation. Here you can see uh, moderated uh, uh, effect of involvement for this indirect effect, for this mediator so this is a way that we can see uh, we can test moderated mediation in uh, bank 
Okay. So the, this is uh, almost uh, all basic features related to assessment of moderator uh, using interaction. But, uh, okay, let me go to this one, step four again, and delete uh, this uh, moderator. Okay. Now I want to use uh, multi, I want to do multi-group analysis. I want to do multi-group analysis for whole model using bar field. For example, gender, is uh, my moderator and want to compare all effects for gender and do multi-group analysis uh, across gender, right? Okay. To uh, perform a multi-group analysis, we don't need to add something here. We don't need to add in our framework. Uh, we, uh, we have this result, okay? We, uh, for multi-group analysis, we have to go to explore. This uh, explore is uh, some new features from uh, uh, actually VARP uh, version six. So VARP PLS version six, uh, these new features actually were included in VARP PLS. So here you can see many different features. Uh, explore conditional uh, probabilistic uh, queries, full latent cross analysis, uh, and uh, some interesting uh, uh, other analysis. But here uh, we want to see multi-group analysis and measurement invariance. When we want to check uh, multi-group analysis and prior to perform multi-group analysis, we have to go to measurement invariance, right? And for measurement invariance, we need to check uh, difference between measurement model, okay? So when you click on this measurement invariance, okay, you will transfer to this uh, page. Okay, here you can uh, select your grouping variable type, grouping variable and analysis method and minimum number per each group. Okay, so my grouping variable is gender, doesn't matter unstandardized or standardized here. Okay, just choose uh, unstandardized and the gender, we have two group. Okay, for uh, measurement invariance, for measurement invariance, here we can choose different method to compare loading and to compare weights. Traditional literature, it discussed uh, compare loading. But uh, actually PLS, because it is a composite base, some recent literature suggests using and comparing weight, comparing weight for uh, regardless of nature of uh, construct, either is uh, formative or reflective, uh, suggest to compare weight, right? But uh, we uh, choose uh, one of this one. We have three method. Uh, this one is uh, similar to latent cross. Don't want to go through this method. And uh, we have two, two methods here, setter weight method and pull the standard error. Uh, pull the standard error is common method to use when uh, we uh, assume a standard error of group one and group two is uh, identical, similar, no significant difference. But if we know there is significant difference between a standard error of group one and two, we have to choose the setter weight uh, method with loading or weight, okay? If we choose the setter weight method for, uh, I choose pull the standard error with loading and then I will check weight, okay? Here we have only two group. So here you can see the result of uh, loading for first group, group one, so here you can see loading of, loading of all items and also full collinearity, provide full collinearity. And loading for group two. Difference between loading, difference between loading group one and group two. You can report 
this uh, difference between loading and the p value of significance of difference between loading so you can see here for ca uh, for community attachment uh, all loading are uh, invariant so there is not the significant difference between loading here also for economic gain, environmental attitude, perception, and so forth. So here you can see p-value. P-value all are higher than 0 0.05. You, you can see t-value. You can see confidence interval. So confidence interval all include 0. It means for all loading for construct, there is no significant difference between loading. So we have full measurement invariant based on assessment of loading. So for uh, multi-group analysis, only 50% and partial measure invariance is enough. But if we choose weight instead of loading, here also we can see result of weight. So this is weight for group one. Weight for group two, difference between weight and the p value. Again, you can see p value are all are higher than 0 0.05 and uh, insignificant. And the t value and the confidence in 90%, 95% confidence interval. So here you can compare weight to assess measurement invariant. So the results show these two groups are invariant. Measurement model of these two groups are invariant. So there is no any difference between measurement model of group one and group two. Okay, so based on this, we can go for multi-group analysis. We can go for multi-group analysis. So for multi-group analysis, when you report this measurement invariance result, again, you can, uh, you can go to explore and perform, now perform multi-group analysis. Okay, grouping variable unstandardized, gender, and the uh, pool standard error. Here you can see result of pad coefficient. No, pad coefficient for group one, Pad coefficient for group two. Difference between pad coefficient. Okay, difference between pad coefficient and the p value for pad coefficient. Only the difference between pad coefficient of the environmental attitude to perception is significant between two groups. Okay, p value. Okay, uh, and you can get T value. So T value is, but when you look at T value, you can see uh, that significant was only for one tail, right? So two tail is not significant if your hypothesis is two tail, but if it's one tail, significant, so you can get uh, T value, okay? And you can get also confidence interval for environmental attitude the to perception. Okay. Confidence interval for uh, effect of environmental attitude on perception. But based on confidence interval, you can see here is not significant. Because the confidence interval actually is very uh, most conservative compared to p value and t value. So it's the, and the, here you can see t value is uh, close to 1.64, right? So uh, if you choose to report confidence interval, your result is not significant. There is not significant difference between effect of environmental attitude to perception for two groups of gender between male and female. So this is for uh, two group and multi-group analysis, result of multi-group analysis. But if you have more than two group, if you have more than two groups, so it means your uh, variable 
your categorical variable is include more than two groups. So you don't need to split two different groups and actually the run your analysis for a few times. For example, we change to age. Okay, age we have four groups. Okay, before that we need to check uh, measurement invariance for honest standardized and for age and analytical method pulled. Uh, okay, so here. You can see for three groups, group two, three, four. And you can see weight for group two, weight for group three, and weight for group four, and difference between different pairs. Okay, this is pair one between group two and group three. So you can see the result of difference of weight here. Okay, and the p value for group one, group two, and three. Then you can see result for second pay, group two and four. So this is the result of measurement in variance for second pay. And here group three and four, okay? Three and four, you can see difference between group three and four uh, between weight and p-value and uh, the confidence interval and t-value. But why we don't have group one? Because here we set minimum per group 50. And it means the number of uh, the number, the sample in group one is less than 50. So software doesn't include group one in this analysis because we set minimum per group 250. So if we change this one to, for example, 30, okay? Now we have group one because group one is the number of group one is 50. So when we set minimum uh, less than 50, the software include this group. So now you have between group one and two, group one and three, group one and four, two and three, two, four, three and four. So you have all pairs, all possible pairs here. You have measurement invariance result. So you can report measurement invariance based on weight or based on loading. And when you go to multi-group analysis, we do same age pool and uh, this one changed to 48 because we know now is 20, uh, 50. So you have result of uh, multi-group analysis and different pairs and pad coefficient for each group and comparison between pad coefficient, p-value, and the uh, uh, confidence interval for each pair. So you don't need to run multi-group analysis a few times. All possible pairs uh, can be compared in bar PLS in uh, first for measurement invariance and now for multi-group analysis. So this is another way that you can apply uh, VARP PLS to test moderator. This time moderator is age. And for uh, uh, first practice, moderator was gender. Gender was two group, but age is four group. So you can see the result for four groups from this analysis. And you can report measurement invariance and the uh, result of multi-group analysis uh, and uh, moderating analysis and assessment uh, from here. Okay, so the, this is the two uh, ways, uh, interaction effect and multi-group analysis that we can apply in VAR PLS and uh, assess moderator using uh, these two methods. Okay, now we can go to your 